Hi there, this video is for people who are using Speed Quizzing version 4 but would like to start using Speed Quizzing version 5 but are maybe a little bit put off by how different it looks. Uh, I'm going to just show you direct comparisons where uh, the buttons are on the two different um, versions. So first thing to do is I'm going to show you in Speed Quizzing version 5, if you click on there and click on Preferences, uh, you should see um, a tab called Simple Mode. Just make sure that Simple Mode isn't enabled because it's very much for people who've never used Speed Quizzing before at all. It will undoubtedly uh, hide some quite important features. I would imagine that you want to use if you was to use uh, if you was to uh, tick the Simple Mode. Okay, and then we go straight to version four, and I'll just start going through the various buttons and where they've changed and where the things have moved to and things. So we've got Demo Mode down there. If we go to version 5, demo mode is now up there. It does the same thing. Uh, easy activate, reauthorize, etc. We've got the host options, which does the same thing, but it's just a little button there now. It looks like the Quizmaster's handset. Click on there. You can do the usual stuff. You can change the plotting of the uh, host and the uh, Quizmaster ID. And then we've got um, next on along is there the handset, which is for the slides that it plays in between the rounds. Um, that's moved up there, so you can see that you click on the little cogs the same. Uh, and but there are uh, drop downs now, which you didn't have before, so it's a bit more comprehensive. We'll go into that later. Live screen as uh, is the same. Click on there, or you tick the little tick box to actually show the live screen. Now it's the same. You've got the, the settings there, but instead of the little tick box, you actually just click on the uh, live screen button. It goes green to display the live screen. It is showing on my other screen. I have to take my word for it, but it is. And I've turned it off again. So the browser to load your quiz packs in. Usually would uh, you would click on there, load questions or load questions. Uh, on version 5, however, it's got its own little browser built in, and it should always be showing the most recent quiz pack. Um, but you can go and look at your quizzes folder by clicking on there, upper level, etc. You know, it works. And we click on there. And then you would just click on the um, the round directly. And then on the fly, whereas on the fly, you would click on there if you wanted an on the fly round of keypad questions or buzzing or nearest wins. On this, instead, you go over to the on the fly section and you'd click on keypad or nearest wins or buzzing. So click on keypad. There you go. Uh, the bingo button there, speed bingo, play speed bingo is there on version 4, but on version 5 it's there in the other game boards. So you would click on there, you would get your bingo. Then we've got the clips game. Now the clips game, as you can see there, was quite bold and up front, whereas it's hidden in version 5 because it's what we're calling a legacy product now. It's not something we're going to uh, promote anymore or update. But for people who, who still want to use it, you can go to version 5 and it's hidden. You would do Command Shift S on a Mac, Control Shift S on Windows. So if I do it on there, Control, no, that's it. Uh, there's your clips round. Okay, what other buttons are there? We've got Clear Teams there. So Clear Teams is now that one there, that little icon. It says Delete Teams, it calls it now. In the old version 4, if you held shift down, clear teams became reset scores, which would put all these scores to zero. That now, you don't need to hold shift anymore. It's got its old button there, reset scores. Okay. Then we've got block teams, which is now that one there, block teams. And the sound button, which used, uh, that, does, that mutes the sound if you press that on version 4. And if you hover over it, you get some volume controls. Version 5, that's now your mute button there. And that's your little mixer, but it's a bit slightly more comprehensive now if you click it and you can change your, uh, your sound theme as well in there. But there is also a master fader there, which you didn't have before for your volumes as well. Now, this button here, the scores, or we used to call it the score, yeah, the score reader, the scores reader, this allows you to go through the uh, scoreboard announcing the scores and getting the cheer sound. Um, slightly more, quite a bit more comprehensive in version 5, but it's now called leaderboard, okay? So hitting the, the right-hand cursor, same as before, uh, scrolls through, but it doesn't actually make the cheering noise. You need to hit the blue button or the space bar if you want the cheering noise. So then buttons both do the same thing, one with the cheering sound, one without the cheering sound. Auto step basically goes through it, and that's uh, without you having to do anything, and that, that does the speed. But be, well, I'll show you more about that later in another video. Uh, the little green router icon there, which goes orange or green, depending on how you're connected in Speakers in 5, is there and works pretty much the same, apart from if you're using one of the ruckus routers, which some people are using instead of um, the uh, pocket hubs, then that'll turn blue now instead of green. That's worth knowing. 
Uh, the folder which opens your little speed quizzing documents, the little folder that opens the speed quizzing documents there has now moved over to the right, but move, uh, behaves exactly the same. So over to the teams on the left-hand side, so you can see there, there was always this number there telling you how many was the maximum you could fit on uh, based on the screen size and your resolution and things. That's no longer relevant in Speak Within 5. There isn't a number telling you how many you can fit on because there will be a scroll bar will appear. Uh, so you can essentially fit on as many as you want to. And likewise, in addition to that, you've got all these things here to uh, make the text bigger and smaller, layout slightly different. Uh, which you didn't have in speakers in version 4 and likewise you can now go up to four columns if your screen is wide enough and you stretch it across and you've got enough teams in you can, it'll add columns as well which you can choose whether to have one two three or four columns and scrolling you should have noticed by now that everything down here is relevant to the teams list on the uh, on the left hand side if you click on a team name in version 4 it brings up the player teams options which is the same in version 5 but it's just going to be called teams options i believe um, and it's pretty much the same, just uh, a bit tidier. So if you look there, we've got the buzzer sounds in version 4. In version 5, they're hidden until you click on it, then you get to see them all. We've got in version 4, we've got the colours and the hot swap device. If I go back, the colour is now there. The hot swap is improved in version 5 because in, uh, now all you need to do is give the team a pin to put in the new device and that will swap for, if, if a team is running out of battery or something, they can swap a device to a different device, which is cool. Uh, then we've got the block team button, we've got the mapping grid and the profile picture, where you used to have to do that if you were using profile pictures and the mapping grid, whereas now the good news is you can fit on the grid, and if you've got a profile picture in, it's there at the same time. Uh, more about the profile pictures later. We've got the block teams you would do from there. Scramble's a new thing, which we'll, we can show you later. Uh, there's then uh, buttons over there, which was test device struck sounds, device sound select. So test device sounds, device sound select. And it's all there, but just looking a little bit nicer, I like to think. Something worth pointing out, there's a cross in the top right hand corner now whenever there's one of these modal type things open. You can click the cross to close it, but likewise you can hit the escape button on your computer keypad, on your computer keyboard to close the modal as well. So let's start a game. If I click on that, it goes to this, which you should be reasonably familiar with. Um, if I was to do this, which will be a bit slower, I think, in version 4, do that. Looks pretty much the same. One thing you'll notice is a new button here called Auto Bonus. By sliding that across the main scores, it does automatically adjust the speed bonus now, and it does this dynamically and intelligently based on how many teams you've got on the uh, left-hand side, because it's occurred to us that not everyone knows the best, the optimum setting for the speed bonus and whether to have the sliding scale on. So that kind of does some of the thinking for you, but you can turn that off if you don't want it to affect it automatically. So if I start the round, we should be able to see what's going on down the bottom. We've got the point slider and the speed bonus slider. And we've got sliding scale on or fixed, go wide, evil mode. All of that should be over in version 5. So that's now your points. Um, speed bonus, fixed or sliding scale. Um, then we've got go wide and evil mode. If you'd rather see things uh, written or in bigger detail, you can click on the top thing, but otherwise you get to see it all at the same time. Now these things here, utilities, we've got practice mode, on the fly, um, the, sh the game rules, handset help, toggle that on and off, light mode if you're not a fan of the dark. Uh, that's a new thing, uh, a new feature where you can change the size of the text on there. On version 4, they were all just a bit scattered all over the place. You had on the fly there, practice mode, handset help, then you had the game rules there and end round there. So it's a lot more in the same place. You've got end round there. Um, one more thing I should probably show you is um, fast track. Now, not a lot of people probably know what fast tracking is, but if you, you could get caught out with this because on Speak Wizzing 4, you, all you needed to do was hold shift down at a certain time. But I do need to tell this, uh, alert you to this in case anyone goes to try and use it. You do now have to enable fast tracking in the settings, in the preferences. Uh, so that's quite, you know, not, not for everyone, the fast tracking. So off the top of my head, without uh, thinking, overthinking this, I think that's pretty much uh, a decent start. Thanks for watching.